Hello, YouTube family and friends. And uh, today, we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. And to some of you fathers who are bad mothers. <laughs> you know, woman doesn't only play a, a mother on YouTube and and Facebook and TikTok, she is one. So we're gonna get to asking woman a couple of questions and we're gonna see what happens. So tune on in, stand by, as a black dad is coming to you, Mother's Day special. Hello, everybody, and happy Mother's Day to my mothers out there. No? What about my mothers? Are your mother's my mother's? Or mo your mother's your mother's? Your mother's my mother, and my mother's your no, mother. No, not my mother, but you said my mother's. So yeah. they're our mothers. Those are so all the mothers out there, you're your mother. Anyway, <laughs> what we're going to do is, we, we, we got a couple of questions we're going to throw at one. She happens to be a mother of 18 kids. Five. Five children. She, five children. Remember in Mississippi when people used to have like down south? I ain't knocking down south. They had like 20 kids. Okay. I think she got 20. Who do? You. I, no. It just feels like I have 20. I know. I'm sorry. I have six kids. Him included. Negro, please. Yo. My man. My bad mother. You know you my baby. You my baby. Anyway, we went to a Kentucky Dirt, just real quick, we went to a Kentucky Dirty Party uh, yesterday. Yeah. And so we're shooting this before Mother's Day. And we want to thank uh, Camille and Anthony for inviting us. And it was wonderful. Our first Kentucky Derby Party. We had a Super Bowl party. We had parties during NBA Finals. First one. I want to say this. That the horse I picked, I think as soon as the, the hitch run the... <laughs> Run the uh, bell door, on door, that thing. Door, door knock was I don't put his name out there. Door knock was I think he ran straight to the truck <laughs> so he can go to the glue factory. <laughs> I'm like this dude. That's not nice. I'm just saying. So anyway, woman, well, let's get started. All right. So what we got is a couple of questions. You don't know the questions. We trying to okay. start conversations. You are mama, so let's get into it. Your old mama. I'm not an old mother. Your granny now. Okay, but I'm not an old mother. Go ahead. Oh no, he didn't. So anyway, first question. From a scale from one to 10, rate being a mom in your book. One being, hated it. Hated it. Or 10 being the ultimate joy. Rate being a mom in your book. Just to you, not to everybody For me, else. a 10. Because it's funny because when I became a mom the first time, Hey, it did. No, 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 no. It was like you have a new set of eyes. God gives you a new set of eyes. Well, God gave me a new set of eyes when I became a mother. Actually, when I found out that I was pregnant. And so it was like a new sense of responsibility. So my personality type is to go into that mode of that mama mode and what that looks like. I don't know. Who knows when you first become a mother what that looks like? You know, but I had good examples. My grandmother, my mama, you know, my aunts and whatnot. So you take all those different elements and we cannot forget Felicia Rashad's character on the Cosby show. She was your mama? She was my TV mom. Okay. She was my TV mom. So on, on a scale of one Did to she ten. she know that? No. Maybe, maybe we should. You should write a I should. Finish, come on. Felicia Rashad, if you are watching. Come on our channel, Felicia Rashad. You help our viewers. I think, honestly, she was everybody's t TV mom. She was everybody's t TV mom. Um, but on a when, scale when I saw her, she, I was a grown man. And she was everyone's TV mom. When I saw her, she was, I was a grown man. I looked at her like, you know, I looked at her anyway, white. this is sure. Mother's Day special. Okay. Let's, let's talk them from you. But however, it was, on, on, uh, being a mother is a, is a 10 because it's a, it's a tremendous responsibility, you know, and watching these little people become human beings. And even to this day, you realize that you, you'll be parenting for the rest of your life. Sounds exhausting. It is, but it's so rewarding. So on a scale of one to 10, it's a 10 for me. All right, well, let's move on. We don't want to keep them too long because they want to celebrate a buffet. And well, you family. look, you were just getting into when you was asking me questions. I know what I was getting into when I married you. I knew you could talk. You're welcome. I'm like, oh, Lord. I'm telling you something, fathers or, 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 or boyfriends or whoever, when you are fathers, because you want, when your girl, if you ever in the room, when your girl gives birth, we were talking about this. <laughs> Shout out to Drake. I talked to him yesterday about it. 
it changes the whole dynamic of your relationship in the bedroom. It does, because you can see there. things that you would never ever not unsee. Mm -hmm. When the baby comes out, you be like, oh, she been lying to me the whole time. So <laughs> anyway. You, you should see the awesomeness of being a woman. I, 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 I saw I saw some deceptiveness of being a woman. We are superheroes. I be, super cunning. We are a what? We're super cunning. I anyway, didn't see, I didn't see no changes. I, I saw. I like. Oh hell no. <laughs> so anyway, when you take time to think about it, how do you think being a mother has changed since you were a little girl? With social media, twenty-four hour news, tech, music, and other things that we we uh, we know now that we didn't know then. How do I think that social media? It's social media, twenty-four hour changed. news, music. How does that change being a mother? Being a mother, you saw mothers back then. Right. You see mothers now. You being a mother. How does that change? You know, the advent of the cell phone, and YouTube, and right. Sex and Red, and, and Drake. And, can no, I understand that. I mean, because because when our kids were little, you know, um, like the older ones, they were born in the early nineties, mid nineties or so, and so that's when they really became, you know, when the social media, sort of, kind of, I mean, computer, internet, all that really started becoming alive, right? So when they were little, we were able to use that in regards to part of their lessons and things like that. We were able, we were very attentive to that. Honestly, I think that for the mothers now who are raising children now, I think it really it should really heighten your awareness and really policing what the kids are watching because they are so easily influenced. And that's the reason why it's so important, even as a mother, father, your village, that they really are listening and being engaged with the children because it's something else. You know, you hear about even with the teenagers, you have teenage suicide that has increased and that's attributed to social media, the things that they see and people that can really prey on your children. So I think that it has really made the job of a parent, if you will, harder, but I think it takes more time and attention and awareness when it comes to parenting, parenting your children, especially as a mother. You know, we're already mother lioness and, and, and mother bears. It just really um, has it made it more challenging. But if, like I said, we're superheroes. There's nothing that we can't overcome. I, I believe also, this is just me. I'm just throwing this out there. What, what, let's talk about- As a mother's perspective? A, from a father's perspective, who sit back and, and watch us okay. and you know, who's been involved. How do we reach that? You know, we've been in situations where, where we've seen a lady that's cussing her kid out. Mm -hmm. and, and we got grandma cuss daughter out. And, right. She cuts granddaughter out, and then daughter cuts daughter out, and then you see that it, it's that. coming. Great grandmama cuts, like right? home bees and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That 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 tradition, that that curse that they just like. My daughter's a bee, my granddaughter, and like wow, you know. We, and, but they always want to say, I, I, and I'm not trying to jump. Woman jumps on me sometimes. I say everybody who's like, I'm a queen. I want to say sometimes, <laughs> not so fast. Uh, and then somebody got something. Okay, but if you're a queen. Put your crown on, right? But you, my thing is that even over the time of history, you have different types of queens, right? But it's, and, and along with those being queens, there's different personalities that come along with it. It all starts with making a decision. What's acceptable to you is not. And how do you break that generational curse? You know? Some people don't see it as a curse. Well, but I think that with when you become when you change your environment sometimes when it's not the norm i think some people see it as a curse because it don't see it as a curse because it's the norm that's what's in their environment that's what they're used to but i think that when you become more um, you come out of as one of my friends say local when you change your environment and you actually explore other ways to be able to communicate and see and honestly be still and listen to the impact that it has. Those words, words have so much power because we just had this conversation with a, uh, a group of my friends and we were talking about the power of words. If you tell a child that they are stupid and you repeatedly continue to tell them that, they believe that. So then therefore, guess what they're gonna act like? Well, you know, don't speak too much for me because you know I'm stupid. 
those words have power. When you call somebody the B word, for, for our audience, we'll say the B word. But however, some some children will will perform or or show up in the world in that way. Because I guess what, if Mama's telling me or Daddy's telling me that's what I am, then I must be what I am. Because why would they tell me any different? What if the wife calls the husband stupid? What? Is that? And he act, then he's gonna act stupid because. Well, where is this line of question coming this kid, from? This kid. All right, move on to the next one. I'm just just, but just to answer your question, then they shouldn't be stupid. And they shouldn't act like the B word. Who, the kids? No, he was asking about the husband. What about when the kids act stupid? Excuse you? I don't believe in stupid children. They just being kids. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Mm hmm. I sure do. Santa Next Claus. question Is there a different approach to raising a boy versus a girl? And in what, if, if, if so, at what age does the difference take effect or have to go into effect? Well, that's a really good question. Who came up with these questions? So that's a really good question. It, it really is. Is there a difference? I think that. I mean, let them know you have three boys I and have, two girls. Well, you just told me I have. I'm sorry, I, have, I sold the we show. Have, we have three boys <laughs> and, and two girls. It's your show, it's you. You have it. What did I say? This doesn't say ask a black mom. She I mean, wants us to well, change. Maybe it should. But anyway. That's for another episode. But however, um I think that for me with all five children there's a difference. You can't you you can't approach each one of your children in the same way but for me with society i believe that my young black men when they come into this world they already have a target on their back and they have more things that are expected of them so for me as a mother and not speaking from a father but speaking as a mother um i think for me it was more of a concentration of showing them love and that nurturing and maybe it's because too my twins are the youngest and you you have our oldest michael who's, who's the oldest you know but it was Life's more army. It, whatever it was more of loving them a little bit harder for me um uh, whereas with my girls it was more of my country was raising them up as women but i think that all overall all of your children are different in regards to the personality types and that's how you show up for them um, not slowing down, listening, and acknowledging that, and adjusting your approach that way, if that makes sense. Is that your question? I mean, so you're saying that each one, each child, in a bit, so you don't have like when, when I have when you have a girl, somebody, if, 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 if mothers were sitting at a conference, you were at a conference, mother's conference, say, hey, I'm not a boy, and said, well, you, you, you said that boys do, especially boys, black boys, mm -hmm. brown boys, they have yeah. a target on their back. I believe so, yes. They're, they're going to be. So you have to give them maybe extra uh, in that spinal cord, or maybe a to calm that rage that may become or something. I'm, well, I, so. honestly, I just think I just because for me, it was loving them a little bit different to give them that um that motive. I don't know the word more strength. To be honest with you, sometimes you have to concentrate and teach your children how to love um, and to feel love and to acknowledge the fact that they are and that they're loved. For, but for ch overall, when it comes to children, I think everyone's different. I, don't, I wouldn't say you treat your boys different than you treat your girls, or you're harder on your boys than you treat your girls. Um, because my girls will tell you probably that I was harder on them than I was with the boys. And maybe it's kind of um, because I had you. I mean, I had, it was a balance of mama and daddy and those, and those different approaches and backgrounds and things of that nature. So for me, it was loving, loving a little bit more. Not that I love many less, but it's like showing that emphasis of love when it comes to and support when it comes to my boys, to be honest with you. Because like I said, little black and brown boys, they, as soon as they come out into this world, the world sees them differently. They see them, what's the word I'm thinking of, of intimidating. That's prey. You know, so that's predatory. Because even to be yeah, because even to this day, I just regardless, you know, they're young men out in this. They're they are out in this world. They're not in this bubble. And what's important to me is that we keep the conversation going, that we're talking, and that you know that they're in touch, and they got that mama point of view as well as their daddy point of view. All right, that, that kind of segates into this next question, which is kind of deep. And I don't want to get too deep, but it is deep. And you can have. It. 
Well, you okay. you a co-host that's, of Ask a Black Day, you're Smith and Hallie. But is this what this platform is about? Yeah, let's Asking talk about it. questions and getting into okay. the conversation. And you don't know nothing about this, but it can happen. What advice would you give to a young, expecting single mom to be? Remember, in 2022, the U.S. Census said that 30, 39.8% of all babies born in America were done to unwed mothers. That's that's all. 39, almost 40% were. The, the number grows higher, a lot higher, when you talk about black mothers who are having children with no fathers and Hispanics who are having children with no fathers. So, with that being said, a young mother, there's, there may be no daddy or father figure in the horizon mm -hmm. right now. What advice? Now, you didn't walk those shoes. Did you hear me? Anyway. But anyways, what advice? I'm serious. What advice yeah. would you give that young mother who's yeah. expecting? Now she, so she, she, she mm -hmm. knows. How, how, we don't know how old, young she, but she's young. But we don't know. How, what would you give her? You know, she's. I, honestly, time. I would tell them that I, there is nothing that you can't do. It's gonna be, it's gonna be some trying times. But there is nothing that you can't do. God, I believe strongly, you've heard me say this, God designed us in a way that we provide. You know, um, one advice I would give that mother too is to listen, listen to oneself. Calm yourself in the midst of that anxiety, trust like, how am I gonna do this? You know, find your village in regards to that. That's what's important. Don't worry about how or what other people may say or or even perceive you. Because guess what? None of that's important at all. It's not important at all. There is nothing that you can't do. When I say that a woman is a superhero, I truly believe that women are superheroes because we we pop, of course, along with men. We populate this earth. We begin a tremendous responsibility. We're designed that way. I would say be still within your heart and listen. Even when you become a mother, you listen. You practice that listening with yourself. You practice that listening with your child. You know, because there's nothing that we can, that we can't do, to be honest with you. And find your village. And not just people who are just giving you, you know, just giving you just advice um, that based upon just their upbringing or what they do. You know, you got to find your own balance when it comes to raising your children. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, I'm not going to comment on it because it's not Father's Day, Mother's Day. But I agree with one thing I said, find your village. I think you have to. It's always important. Your village is going to guide. This is just me saying it. If you find the smart village, you raise a smart. <laughs> you know, if you find that that village that, that brings about kings and queens and you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? That's what you're gonna bring about. But I believe in diversity in your village too. Oh, yeah. Diversity counts because it, 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 it does. Life. And just because you're not married, um, within your divert with, within the diversification of your village, you have to ask yourself. And if, and if it is not in your village, there's different groups and things of that nature, like the uh, girls and boys club. Um, you have some county resources, right? There's, there's a lot of resources, resources. federal resources. It, it really truly is. That is your responsibility here to diversify your village. And if you ever need help with that, if you have any questions, I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, continue to keep submitting those questions. We get a lot of good questions from, especially from our viewers, you know, in regards to that. And, you know, some of the, the organizations that we belong to, we can put you in contact with them as well. But, you know, create your village, you know, more importantly, not only for yourself, but for your children as well. I agree. Okay, one more. We got two more things we're going to close it out. This one's going to lighten it up because it got too heavy. It's not heavy. This is really good conversation. You know, I like a good conversation. Yeah, but the people Especially on You know, Day. it's YouTube. They they go like, oh, no, I'm turning. I, go, I don't know about you, but I go to YouTube to learn some things, too. So social media is not all bad. I'm going to get my OnlyFans page. That's okay. I'll pimp you out. Oh, what kind of Mother's Day is that? But you got to have vision. Anyway. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, Mother's Day. <laughs> anyway, top three TV or movie moms. Uh, top, t top three TV or movie moms. Well, I already talked about my, my number one movie mom. That's Claire Huxtable. That's my number one TV show mom. She's one. 
She's one. So she's the first. She's she's, she's, my, she's, she's my number she's, one. She's the alpha. alpha Honestly. Alpha. Mm -hmm. alpha but there I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of other, any other mothers that even Donna come Reed. close to that. No, I don't, look. I, Joan Cleaver. That's, those are yours. June Cleaver. June Cleaver. That, Cleaver. That's yours. And who's the other one you just said? Donna Reed? Donna Reed. Honestly, growing up, I'm trying to think of any other The lady from Lost in Space who let her son, her daughter grow up with, with Don all the time. I, I think I was too young. And let the little boy go up with Dr. Smith. I think I was too young. And I think probably our audience is probably too young to even remember some of those How things. about Betty and Wilma? Wilma Flintstone, Betty, Betty Rubble? No. Or the Betty Flintstone? No, Wilma. It, it's, it's, Wilma. it's Wilma Flintstone and mm -hmm. Betty Rubble. Hmm. See, you, you remember that? Honestly, that's the only one that's really synonymous. I'm telling you, Donna me. Reed and It's a Wonderful Life and Mary. And with Juju Petals and all that, she was a good mom. Yeah, mama, yeah. should we pray Wait for them? You know what? Yes, pray hard. <laughs> huh? No, it's funny. I remember when I was a little, little kid. I'm pretty sure these were really Little, little kid. It was little. um Julia. Remember the, remember the Julia was the black Don, nurse? Uh, Dion Carroll. Diane Carroll, Diane Carroll, and her Is son's kids? name. Yeah, it was a little boy. Oh, was his name? I, don't watch I think it. his name was Corey or something like that. I remember my mama watching it, you know, watching that show. But honestly, for me, it was all it was always What about Jam? What about Brady girl? About it was always Claire Huxtable. And you know why? Because she's black. Because she's black. That is true. Black representation. What about Ford Evans? Who? Ford Evans. I, she up. kept she kept poor though, but you know. Don't say that. <laughs> she didn't keep poor. You, but you asked for me. I mean, nothing. No shade with Florida Evans. I mean, she represented. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. She, she how to keep your kids poor? No, but for me, we ain't never leaving this ghetto. Damn, damn, damn. You know, you had the mom that was on a uh, Family Matters, but for me, I. For me, I was more in tune when it came to Claire Huxley. Okay. All right, so let, 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 I'm going to give you... What about you? No, no. I, it ain't Father's Day. No, not you. You. Oh. What TV mom? I thought you were talking to me. Mm, I ain't thinking about you. TV moms or movie or movie moms that really... Uh, resonated. That resonated with you. Miles Claire Huxley. Who was yours? Am I missing somebody? Send, I put put an email. Email going to be up here somewhere or down here somewhere. Yeah. We got to it yet. So woman... We, 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 I want you to to just close first. We'll close the episode. Up. You have two. You have you know, Monty, our daughter, his oldest daughter, is a mama now. Yes, my first grandbaby. Our daughter-in-law, Alex, yes. will be a mama this year. September. September. So, what advice or what point of wisdom or rah rah would you give them? Ride, ride. There's some something you know, you know. Enjoy the ride is the ride, ride. But my word of advice as a mother to another, um, to another mother, and I'm not just speaking to Alex and Imani, and you probably heard me say this before. Um, just listen, and what I mean is listen with your heart and your mind. Listen to yourself because you got to take care of yourself for you to be good for your, for you to be there for your child. And then when it comes to you being that mama, and I know that it can be overwhelming, especially when you have this little human being who's new to this world, and you are so responsible, along with, you know, um, the father, if you will, your husband, your boyfriend, or whom, whatnot. But listen, trust me, you may think that child is not communicating with you, and you're not communicating with your child, but if you be still and you just listen, and you take care of yourself, you take care of your child, once again, there's nothing that you cannot do. You have superpowers. You're a woman. All right. With that being said, woman, anything you want to say before we close it out? It's Mother's Day 2024. You have the flow. Would you like to make a statement, a comment, as you say, have Mother's Day or anything like that? No, I just simply want to say Happy Mother's Day to all my fellow superheroes. Because if you don't think that you are, you are sadly mistaken. There's nothing that us mothers cannot do. If you ever need to reach out to someone or you need help, you do just that. There's nothing. There's nothing that you cannot do. And happy Mother's Day to all my mamas out there. And what we're going to do is 
we have a special, before you close out, I have a special uh, video I want to show you. And uh, we'll see what you react to on this video. What's going on, everybody? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, especially to my mama, a.k.a. woman, co-host of Ask a Black Dad. Thank you so much for doing everything that you can for me. Thank you for doing everything for me. And thank you for letting me be me. At this present time, I'm a cat, but you know what I mean. I'm talking about the IRL stuff. So thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Enjoy your special day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially our mother, uh, woman, a.k.a. Yoko, co-host of Act Black Dad. Uh, uh, thank you for not only being my mother, but also being my best friend and my support team. Uh, well, the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. All right, well, so with that being said, we got one more thing. Five minutes later. I want to send a special happy Mother's Day shout out to my wife for expecting her first child. So happy first Mother's Day, baby. Aww. Then also want to say happy Mother's Day to my mom, Sarah, a bonus mom, Dawn. And then also uh, my mother-in-law, uh, Miss Pippa. And then also shout out to my little sister Imani too on her first Mother's Day with her, uh, my nephew actually here. So happy Mother's Day to everyone else as well. Hope you all enjoy your day. Bye. <laughs> hey, Ask a Black Dad. We want to take this moment to say happy Mother's Day to my wife, my mother, Mrs. Ask a Black Dad, and all of the other mothers out there. We truly appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you. Uh, to the people that we didn't put your video in, because we music in. I'm sorry, we cannot use videos with music. So, with that being said, woman, remind them that until we see them next time. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And remember, I should have Mother's Day first. Many, many years ago. Happy Mother's Day. Be safe.